Okay, so Ubuntu 18.04.4 LTS, uh, or Bionic Beaver, has just been released, and I'm really impressed with it. Uh, this is running on my Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gig, uh, just from an SD card, no overclock, uh, so it's just running standard. Uh, the LTS stands for long-term support, uh, and what they're saying is that standard support is going to go on until April 2023, uh, and end of life for this operating system is April 2028. So that's what the long-term support is about. So I thought I'd have a look at it as it showed up in my feed. So you can see if we go to the top here, uh, we've got various different options for power, lock, and settings, uh, and, a, and a straightforward volume control. The reason I've got headphones is because I'm using a little uh, sound card because I wasn't getting any, any sound with Ubuntu, which is what I've had with the other versions of Ubuntu, uh, and I haven't, all I did was plugged in a sound card, and I've got another video on that if you're interested in that. If I go top left, we've got activities, and you can just type anything in here. So let's just type in games, see what it comes up with. And you can see here that it's come up with various different options and a lot of these, well, on the left it's saying Ubuntu software. So it actually searches the Ubuntu store. So if something's not on here, it will come up with it there. So if I click on games, you can see that it comes up in the Ubuntu app store. And if I go back, I'm still in that environment and I can scroll up and down. And the scrolling on everything works really, really nicely on this. Let's close that back down again, go back to the activities with the search, and let's just try something like Bluetooth. You can see that it comes up and it just takes you straight into the settings. And I just like the way it does this universal search. It works like on an iPad. Uh, and I'm used to this sort of way of searching for things. So it's found various different things that, that have blue in them. Uh, on the Ubuntu store and in settings. So really, really great, really snappy. Uh, this is uh, non-overclocked. I've literally just installed this straight on an SD card on my Raspberry 4, 4 gig. So obviously you can see the trash bin up there. Uh, down the bottom right, and I've changed this around. This uh, dock usually comes on the left-hand side, but I quite like it at the bottom of the screen. So if I click on Show Applications, this will show all the things that come pre-installed. The only things I've installed uh, since starting it up are Chromium Web Browser and Gparted, uh, which is to do with uh, PC Max video on extending your Android system uh, or with Lineage. Everything else comes stock with it. So you can see uh, there's a few games on there. There's a calendar, uh, webcam, BIOS app, calculator, language support, input method, Firefox comes pre-installed. Uh, you can see various different LibreOffice programs, Mahjong, uh, Mines, and a few other things. Software updater here. And also the really, really quite decent Ubuntu software app store, which is really nice to use. So let's have a look at the web browser. Uh, I'll use Chromium because I, I just think it works a little bit better. So let's do a few searches, BBC. It just, to me, this it feels really snappy, even though I'm not running from an SSD uh, and I'm not overclocked. And I really like, I really like the layout. It's just very, very simple to use. So Hot UK Deals, you can see I can scroll up and down on that. I can go back to BBC Home and I can scroll up and down on that, and that works nicely. So let's close that one. Let's do a quick YouTube test. Now I did install H264FI, uh, and I have turned on a setting to block 60 FPS video, uh, because other people have left comments saying, that's how you get it to work better. It's still not great, but this isn't overclocked. So let's just click on anything that's uh, that we can show. And you can see that already, even at 480, it's not smooth. So at 720, which, which weirdly is the highest this will go to on this. That looks a bit better, but it's still, it's still not smooth. But, uh, 
and I can't show too much of that obviously. YouTube doesn't tend to work on, on anything properly uh, on Raspberry Pi still, which is it's just surprising and something that would be really nice to sort out. But let's go on about the positives because that is the same on pretty much every operating system I've tried. Um, so there's various things with uh, Rhythmbox, which has got lots of audio streaming, uh, which I won't go through. Uh, there's a screenshot app, which you just click on and you can see that you get various different options on there, which is nice. Uh, if I go into settings, just to show how nice the settings is, displays, keyboard, mouse and touchpad, printers, and I did a video yesterday on that, removable media, Thunderbolt, Wacom tablet, color. So really, really straightforward. Uh, lots of different options. You can see I've gone back a bit more. So things like sound options, everything kind of comes up. And it's just, just really clean, really simple to understand, really nicely laid out. It's a really friendly, sort of modern looking operating system. And uh, with this long term support, so you don't have to mess about. And there's also a help option. So you can see an Ubuntu desktop guide there, all sorts of things. So you can look through like, tips on using this guide, universal access, really, just really nice to use. Uh, and I think it's improved a lot since I first used Ubuntu uh, when it had first been released on the Pi uh, and I'm just really really impressed by it and also if I show files uh, this is something I usually do in my tests because I want to see if it connects to my NAS drive and uh, if I click on other locations and I did this quicker yesterday, uh, WD My Cloud, you can see my network drive comes up straight away, just hit connect. And all my folders show up. So if I just click on a photo, you can see that that comes up and I can close that down. Uh, so all of this, again, I just think looks really nice. Uh, it feels really snappy. It's just really nice to use. So if I go back to home, all these folders and everything, it, it just, I'm impressed. I really like it. I could see myself using this a lot more. I really need to revisit Lubuntu because that was one of the ones that I uh, liked first off. But, uh, but yeah, it, it's great. Okay, so start off by downloading the Pi image from the Ubuntu website. See the link in the description. When that's finished downloading, write the image to your SD card with Balena Etcher. This is much easier with a wired connection, so plug an Ethernet cable into your Pi. Pop the SD card into your Pi and switch on. It's best to have as little plugged into your Pi as possible on any first boot of an OS. The login is Ubuntu, as is the password. Change your password when prompted. Write it down, you'll need it later. Type sudo apt update enter. When that finishes, sudo apt upgrade enter. When that finishes, sudo apt-get install ubuntu-desktop. About 15 minutes later, you'll see this screen. Type reboot. When you see this screen, click on Ubuntu. Your password is the one you created earlier. That's it. You now have Ubuntu Bionic Beaver. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.